Great, welcome back. So in the last tutorial, we covered variables and their definitions. We talked about default and session variables and how we need to configure them appropriately depending on the connection that we're trying to establish to the fixed server at DarwinX. These could be um, pricing connections or trading connections and the values for each will differ based on details that are provided to you by the DarwinX operations team. At the present time, this configuration looks like the following two blocks here of pricing and trading connection configuration that we've put together for you, which will be sufficient for establishing pricing and trading connections. So as you can see, we're using a subset of the available um, values inside the FIX 4.4 dictionary. It is only these that we'll need at the present time to go ahead and establish a basic connection that allows us in the case of pricing connections to establish a price feed whereby we can request market data at tick level and get the associated uh, bid ask tick data as well as the volume per bid and ask. And um, to establish such a connection, we need to set the connection type to initiator. We need to set the start day, end day, start time and end time to the values provided to you by the DarwinX operations team. The heartbeat interval is specific to you. It depends on the kind of frequency with which you'd like to retrieve data um, or communicate with the server and inform the server that you exist. The heartbeat interval depends on you entirely. So in this case, we've set it to 20, but you can set it to anything lower or higher, depending on the specifics of your application, your workflow. Reset on logon is set to yes for pricing connections. The reset sequence number flag is also set to yes in the case of pricing connections. Encryption method, the encrypt method is set to zero. Check latency in this case is set to N. Order timeout again is a value within your control. We set it to 30,000 in this case. File store path contains the name of the folder inside of which you'll, your fixed files will be going when the application has been launched and is in operation. File log path is the name of the folder log that has to be in the current directory, similar to files, where your logging information will be going. Use data dictionary is a Boolean variable, as we said earlier, it can take two values, Y or N in this case. And um, this will in essentially inform your quick fix application that you'd like to use the data dictionary. If that is the case, quick fix will then look for the data dictionary and will try to find the file that you name over here inside data dictionary. This file needs to also be in your application root directory for fix to find it. If it can't find it, it will generate the appropriate error for you. For the session, again, your fix string needs to begin with fix.4.4. And this is a way for you to say that you're using fix protocol version 4.4. Socket connect host this, insert the fix server host that is provided to you by the Darwinix operations team. The port is also provided to you by the team. Uh, sender comp ID and target comp ID are also provided to you by the team. Here, you'll need to set persist messages to no in the case of pricing connections. Going over to trading connections, again, the connection types, because you're the client, uh, both in the case of trading and pricing, you'll be establishing initiator connection types. The start day, end day, start time, and end time will be the same. These values will be provided to you by the, by the ops team. Heartbeat interval again, reset on logon, set to no. Reset sequence num flag, set to no. Encrypt method set to zero, check latency set to no, order timeout 30,000. And again, the variables don't really change very much in the default configuration. Uh, and the only additional variable that we have here is validate fields have values equals n. And finally, the session variables don't change at all. Again, you need to specify the begin string as fix 4.4 in the case of the fix 4.4 protocol. And the socket host and port change in the case of trading connections. Now, if you've been through um, our previous tutorials, you'll have seen that there is one dependency and that is that SSL connectivity is mandatory in the case of trading connections to Darwin X fix servers. So here you'll need to establish SSL tunneling that was covered in the uh, previous tutorials in this playlist. So please go ahead and watch those prior to attempting this configuration, but it's fairly simple and has been documented in those videos. So you'll need to establish an S tunnel and inside that S tunnel, you'll be providing the fix credentials, the actual fix credentials for host and port that were provided to you by the Darwin X operations team. Once the S tunnel is established, you'll need to point your socket connect host variable here in your quick fix application to your local host 127001. 
and the port number that you assigned inside S tunnel. By default, most people will use 443. In our case, in the tutorial that we covered on S tunnel, we used 443, which is why it is 443 over here. If you set this to a different port in your S tunnel configuration, you'll need to make sure that the port over here under socket connect port is also set to that same port number. Your sender comp ID and target comp ID as before with the pricing connection will be provided to you by the DarwinX operations team. And those are the values that you'll need to insert over here. So that's it for session configuration for pricing and trading connections. In the next tutorial, we'll go through fix application structure and how to actually use the quick fix engine in your implementation. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.